Day of Ghana's first president, Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkuma, Ibrahim Abubakar, looks at the state of the pencil factory he did establish in Kumasi. Behind me is the pencil factory, one of the several factories established by Ghana's first president, Osadjifu Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. The existence of this factory meant the country produces and uses locally made pencils without having to rely on imported ones. Thousands of jobs were also created, but the narrative has changed. The factory is now defunct and we have to import pencils in the country. Nkrumah made factories in Kumasi. He had a jute factory, he had a shoe factory, he had a pencil factory. Pencil factory is just around Ababu. Jute factory was uh, insane. Shoe factory was around uh, insane. And then uh, tobacco factory was at uh, Ejra. And these are factories that produce what Ghanaians need. And this, apart from the fact that it's helping Ghanaians, it also creates jobs for us. And Nkrumah did all these things to ensure that it helps us grow our economy. Because if you are to import all these things, it means it's going to affect our economy. And look at all these things that I mentioned. Now they are all imported. Because if you have the uh, pencil factory at that time, with all that structure it has, if, we were, if it still exists up to date, one would have think that it would have enhanced, maybe had another branch somewhere which in, uh, would engage more Ghanaians. We would have been fighting for jobs today if all these factories, even Ashanti alone, are working. What Nkrumah intend to do with all these factories was to make sure Ghana be of its own so that we can manage our economy the way we want it. I feel disappointed any time I see any of the factories. And one will ask why. It is all because of the way Nkuma was exited. After the overthrow, people intend to make Nkuma look devil. So even the factories were not allowed to function so that people will remember Nkuma. Let's allow it to, to spoil, let's get it destroyed so that people will forget about Nkuma. Because the more you enter into all these factories, the more you remember Nkuma. We thought we were doing Nkuma, now we are doing ourselves. There's no way you can start with over 100 factories and end up you don't have even 20. Today we are proud of one district, one factory, which is a PPP thing. Compare it to a total ownership of a company. Which one is an improvement? The one we own or the one we are sharing? Thousands of youth would have been actively working if this defunct pencil factory and other ones are operational. Ibrahim Abubakar, TV3 News, Kumasi. Let's go to the eastern region where my colleague Adjoa Kunedu Yadam was also at Kede to speak to the 73-year-old chief of Adankrono, Osaberi Masaponkuma Nkuma II, who for 10 years worked at the match factory set up by the late president, Dr. Kwame Nkuma. The chief of Adankrono in the Kwaibibre municipality, Osaberi Masaponkuma Nkuma, started his working life with the then vibrant Kade Matches factory. He tells me the factory was his only hope and that of other young people in Kade and its neighboring communities. It used to help us a lot, especially those of us who could not further our education. First, I was employed as a factory hand. We were those that worked directly on the matches. He was there until the new owners decided to move the factory to Accra. 67. After Kwame Nkrumah's overthrow, the factory was sold to some Frenchmen. That was the end of the factory. For 10 years, the factory took care of him and his family until it collapsed. To him, moving the factory to Accra was the end of Kade. He calls on President Kufwadu to pay attention to the welfare of rural dwellers. Mr. Kufwadu, as I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to I am pleading with President Ikufuadu to pay attention to the villages. 
Down, down they go. A journey several meters underground. These are illegal miners in Aboso, a town in Ghana's western region. This town, once upon a time, was an industrial enclave. With rich gold and manganese deposits, it hosted the Aboso Glass Factory and the State Gold Mining Corporation. Sixty years on, they've all collapsed. Think about six kilometers down the belly of the earth. That's how far many young people here would have to go to find gold. And hundreds of people, men and women, would go into pits like these every day. This is just one of the many harsh realities of a lack of jobs in mining towns like Aboso. I am the dear Chris, but my nickname is Tompo. Now, man, for the name of Galam Senum, I did you want. Outside the pit, I meet 32 year old Obri. His parents came to work for the glass factory in its heydays 30 years ago in Aboso. He fell out of school when his father was laid off as the factory folded up. This is as soon as you and I was sent in Elkwa. You might throw her in since he said, Yama, I was saying, I'm not to turn the man I didn't hear. When you had a fan call, the cost of a German Mesa wire basan, Nasun Kajumati Trua, or Hanke, any Bimobo, so many Ayo Jumana, and Cobbe may be a ditching at the same, be an any better, or by Geno Hokama, but a German Yaden, Uncle Dunitino, I'm a wire basawa, a Juma man for so, why and what had they are on any the major one. The result of young people flocking the Lamse site is not hard to find in Aboso. The Divestiture Implementation Committee, the government office supposed to be managing these factories, refused to be interviewed for this program. They did not give me access into the factories. So I've come here on my own seeking to find out how the collapse of these factories is affecting lives here. The contribution of industry and manufacturing to Ghana's GDP has fallen from over 10% in 1993 to around 3% as of 2014. The plans were that they were going to supply more than 80% of the bottle needs, anything to do with glass of the, of, of the country. And of course, this time you have the, all these beer breweries, Coca-Cola, Fanta, uh, and what have you. And then anything, and later on they would have gone to slit this flat glass uh, uh, sheets using all sort of in building houses and that sort of thing. The people who suffer the most in an industrial bust of the scale like that which has happened in Aboso are the country's poorest and most vulnerable. Private mining companies here try to employ young people. But a global price collapse of resources like gold means they are slashing jobs and many are being asked to go home, causing even more joblessness. People are stealing. Thieves, everything, uh, this uh, uh, social rights, people are, that's what I'm saying, everybody's struggling to earn a living. So any means at all, he gets money, he gets trouble. For Joy News, my name is Justice Baby. The News Board Chief Executive of the Tama Metropolitan Assembly uh, to help us understand why this, the, the current state of commerce factories is what it is now, what he, he left with us. It's good to have you. Good afternoon to you. Good Great. afternoon. Now, you, you have presided over that particular municipality, which was the industrial hub of, of this country. Why 
have those factories in that state in which they are now, 60 years on. Thank you. Um, it, it is, I can say that the, the problem we see with our industries today is a, is a, is a mix of a, a policy a, 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 a effectiveness of certain policies that were put together in the past. I say that because many of the factories were built during the time of pre uh, first president Kwame Nkrumah. Mm -hmm. You can talk about uh, uh, many textile industries those days. Sure. You have the Tema textile industry, you have the uh, G GTMC, mm -hmm. GTP, many of them. And GTP is struggling now. They GTP is struggling and, and all the other and ones have gone underground and many other industries. They started folding up at a time when we had a complete liber liberalization of you know, um, economic activities, complete liberalization. So anybody, if you have money, you could import anything that you wanted to import. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was for a reason that we, we thought that when there's competition, then the companies will work very effectively. Mm -hmm. But we forget that sometimes when we go complete liberalization, the companies may not be able to compete with the other ones that we are importing. Sorry, the importation of cheap products uh, uh, the, yes. into the system, sometimes, I mean, fake and inferior products that they, we're competing they, they, they with may not be in what, our what are being imported may not be fake. They may be good. Mm. But because we hadn't developed the, uh, you know, uh, we we'll call it the economic of scale properly mm. for us to be able to compete, mm -hmm. Because equal quality. If these companies are, 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 are they, borrowing they at high what, cost, they, they, they the cost of production is are, high. Are local companies borrow at high cost, and therefore they are not able to compete with the, the goods uh, that are imported. And therefore, at a point, they cannot stand but just to go underground. We mm. also forget that the life mm. of our country depends on these factories. And therefore, I call something preferential protection. Mm. We need to give a certain protection in a way so that we keep them running for, uh, for them to be able to employ. So you're to your pro, pro, or support a protection policies or a certain, policies a for certain protection businesses in this country. For certain businesses. Those ones that we see that they can employ a lot of people. Because if you go completely uh, liberalized, they may not be able to compete. Meanwhile, those ones are the ones that are, uh, you know, employ a lot of people. And therefore, they are keeping people on a job. Look at the, the I, I know when the Tema Textile, mm. TTL was operating. I knew when GTMC was operating. These were two companies in Tema, which were employing a lot of people. When they right. went underground, because they couldn't compete with the commodities that were coming in. Not because those com commodities were inferior, but because they were, they were cheaper mm -hmm. than Absolutely. what was being produced over here. The company had to go underground. And all the, their staff, Working about it, you know, and it's you so. can ma mention many of them, sure. you know. Yeah. But well, if you want to develop this country, you can't forget what Nkrumah did. So the mistake they made was that they threw away the baby with the bathwater, exactly. they overthrew the man and cancelled his ideas. Now, let me tell you a, a history of Academy of Arts and Sciences, for, you know, Gaek, Ghana Atomic Energy Commission. Yeah, yeah. Nkrumah wanted the Ghana Reactor Project, mm. so he started the Ghana Reactor Project. He got uh, the, uh, the Russians, the, the UDSSR, the Soviet USSR. Union, to help us. And so they built the reactor, and in, they had almost finished. And they were bringing the core to, to start the thing, and then the coup came. When the coup came, NLC invited a gentleman, uh, um, John Douglas Cockcroft, who came and said that, look, this reactor is not important. You know, Nkrumah wanted to train scientists and to get the reactor also to produce isotopes for use in hospitals and elsewhere. And then later on, get researchers, scientists who will be in a position to run uh, a nuclear reactor capable of producing electricity for Ghana. So that would, have, that would take years. So Kokov said, oh no, Akosombo is there, you have enough power, so there's no need for this uh, reactor. But Nkrumah did not say that from the very beginning he wanted to produce nuclear energy. He said, introduce nuclear sciences, train sciences, uh, research reactor, get isotopes for use in the hospital, and look at other uses of uh, peaceful uses of nuclear energy. And then this man was saying, oh, and so 
NLC2, they agreed. It was in 1973, that's Bernard. It's very interesting. 1973, when the champion came and then commissioned another professor in Cape Coast to look at it. They said, look, we should go ahead and do it. And then they started again. Uh, in 1976, they were going on. And then the coup came in 1979. So the whole thing stopped again. Until 1995, uh, when we came again and then signed an agreement with the Chinese to build a small reactor. The original one was 2,000 kilowatt. What we have now is 34 kilowatt. We will not be able to do anything. So really, after 1976, it was only 1995. 2017, that we really had something that one could say is a nuclear wow. experimental nuclear reactor. So this is what I'm saying, that we, dest we destroyed, and the, the factory that is set up, now, most of them were destroyed, set up, you know, sold and things like that. You don't throw the baby, what, what do you say? With the bath water. Yeah. The forces of light will eventually overcome those of darkness, and truth will always prevail over falsehood. This is a modern law which cannot be denied.